Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, it's, I'm just so um, amazed um, when I walked in this morning and I saw all your excellences. This, this, this is fantastic. I feel um, it's so warm. And thank you very much for honoring us with your distinguished presence here this morning. I'm extremely grateful. Honorable Kenneth Oforiata, the African Development Bank Governor and the Chairperson of the Board of Directors, uh, Board of Governors and the Minister of Finance for the Republic of Ghana. Your Excellency, Shirley Ayok Boche, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration for the Republic of Ghana. Your Excellency, and I was enjoying my conversation with you, Kati Saba, the High Commissioner of Canada to the Republic of Ghana and the co-chair of the Head of Missions. Your Excellencies, Heads of Diplomatic Missions of member countries of the African Development Bank Group, and it is your bank, so um, I'm delighted that you're here. So this is, this is home zone. Excellencies, Heads of the banks, groups, financial and technical partners that are here, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Good morning, et bonjour. It is truly an honor to be speaking to you this morning, Your Excellencies. I wish to express my deepest appreciation to you for honoring our invitation to this breakfast session. As you know, the work of the bank is in five strategic areas. One is to light up and empower Africa, to feed Africa, to industrialize Africa, to integrate Africa, and to improve the quality of life of the people of Africa. But of course, everything starts with food. And, and I, there's a reason why I'm saying that food is the most important thing. If I might digress for just a little bit on why that is important. When I was a kid, my father wanted me to be a medical doctor, uh, so desperately. And I was only 14 years old when I finished high school. So my father always filled my forms. And he had been a farmer himself. And so my first choice was always, according to my father, medicine. The second choice was always veterinary medicine. And the third choice would be dentistry. <laughs> and whether I liked it or not, I was going to be a medical doctor of, some, doctor of some kind. And so when I applied to the university, they said my grades were not enough for medicine. So they would take me for agriculture. So my father, who, who grew up as a farmer, said never in my lifetime. That's never going to happen. And so the second year I applied again, my grades fell short of medicine. And they said, we'll take you for agriculture. My father said, no, you cannot be in agriculture. We came out of that one. We're not going back there. And so the A-levels you know, advanced because the British system. So I applied again when I finished my A-levels. And uh, they said, oh, but your grades were just not enough for medicine. We'll take you for agriculture. And my father said, then God must really want you in agriculture. <laughs> And then when that happened, I went on to do agriculture. And um, I went on to do agriculture economics in the United States, finished my PhD. And when I finished my PhD, I wrote my father a letter. And I put at the end of it, not my name, I just said doctor. Wow. <laughs> and um, when he got a letter, he started calling me doctor from that time on, just doctor, doctor. So when I sec our first son, who graduated from medical school, I uh, was graduating in the United States. We went over there. My father was 90 years old. So I brought him over there. And so of course, um, he was saying, doctor. We were taking pictures. And he said, doctor. And I turned. Uh, I said, yes, dad. He said, no, I don't mean you. I mean the real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to which I called my dad very quickly. I said, dad, uh, bring the real doctor close by. And I said, even the real doctors would tell you, take three tablets three times a day, but only after food, which means that agriculture is more important than medicine. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, all the programs of the bank all comes down to feed Africa. And therefore, we can't start without feeding you first. And that is where everything is. Agriculture is very important. So thank you very much. I wish to also convey my sincere gratitude to His Excellency Nana, Ado Dankwa Akufo Ato, Ado, President of the Republic of Ghana, for his continuous support to the African Development Bank Group. I also wish to thank you, the Honorable Kenneth Oforiata, the F FDB Governor and Minister of Finance for the Republic of Ghana, 
for facilitating the organization of this breakfast session. Since my arrival in Accra on May the 10th, the hospitality I have been accorded has been simply astounding. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Your Excellencies, my visit to this beautiful country is mainly to engage with the authorities of Ghana as the host country on the preparations for the upcoming 2022 annual meetings of the African Development Bank Group. As you are aware, the 57th annual meeting of the African Development Bank and the 48th annual meeting of the African Development Fund of the Board of Directors of the Governors will be held here in Accra from 27, 23rd to 27th of May 2022 at the Accra International Conference Center. To give a brief background on how Ghana came to host this year's annual meetings, let me say that Ghana was initially nominated to host the 2021 annual meetings at the 2016 annual meetings of the bank group held at the time in Lusaka, Zambia. Following the expression of interest to host the bank's annual meetings during the cycle 2017-2021. The nomination was informed by a report submitted before the Board of Governors by the bank's team, which conducted an assessment of the country's capacity to host this event. However, as you all know, due to the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and its continuous evolution, Ghana could not host the 2021 annual meetings which were subsequently held virtually, as was the case for the 2020 annual meetings. Notwithstanding, and due to the steadfast commitment to advancing Africa's development, Ghana renewed its interest to host the 2022 annual meetings, which the Board of Governors agreed to. This year's annual meetings will, however, be held in a hybrid format for the person participation of all 81 member states of the African Development Bank Group, several invited heads of state and government, special guests, the host country and its invited guests, and executive directors of the African Development Bank Group. And the executive director of the African Development Bank Group, representing Ghana, is here. If you may stand, uh, Ms. Bali. This is with a view to try as much as possible to deal with the effect of the COVID-19 that we have to have social distance and all of that, so that we do not overburden the Accra International Center. Your Excellencies, as the bank's primary stakeholders, it is imperative that we brief you on the upcoming 2022 annual meetings. This year's annual meetings are important not only to the bank, but also to member countries and to our partners as they mark a return to in-person participation following the virtual annual meetings held in 2020 and 2021. We are all thirsty and eager for in-person engagements. And because that's when you can do a lot of deals, you can have a lot of conversations, you can have a lot of interactions, deep in relationships and make sure that strategic issues are discussed that affect all of our shareholders collectively together. Let me say that the theme of this year's annual meetings is gonna be on achieving climate resilience and a just energy transition. And as you know, this issue is particularly important because we finished the, I was talking to the uh, Minister of uh, Environment uh, of one of our countries recently. And he was talking to me about what do we do to be able to manage the energy transition. And I say energy transition is fundamental for us to do. God is good to Africa. We have sunshine, we have 11 terawatts of it. We have 350 gigawatts of hydropower. When you take a look at it in terms of geothermal capacity, we have 150 gigawatts of that. If you're looking at it in terms of wind power, we've got about another 150 gigawatts of that. And if you're looking for it, in terms of what we should do for energy, God give us, has given us all we need for energy. 
So we are big at the African Development Bank when it comes to the whole issue of energy. I have said that we will lead and we are leading on this. And just give you a few ideas about how far we have gone with regard to that. First is that we have doubled our financing for climate to $25 billion by 2025. But most of the issues that have to do with climate have to do with climate adaptation. Africa only contributes no more than 3 4% of the greenhouse gas emissions. But it suffers disproportionately from the negative consequences of it. You've seen it in the floods. You've seen it in the, in the, in the droughts. You've seen it, you know, most recently was in KwaZulu-Natal, which was tragic to actually watch. But that is it. Whether you are in the Sahel, whether you're in the Horn of Africa, ambassador from Ethiopia is here, it's, the news is the same. So we've got to make sure that we help Africa to adapt to climate change. And adapting to climate change is something that we have been doing at the African Development Bank. In fact, if you take a look at your excellences in terms of our financing for climate, the UN Secretary General Guterres said that what we have to do is to have 50-50 balance between adaptation and mitigation. The bank's financing for climate, we are at 67% on adaptation, which is the highest we find <clears throat> of any uh, institution globally. In fact, I was delighted when the UN Secretary General singled out the African Development Bank as an example that others should follow, because we believe that adaptation is critical. And I was talking to the uh, Ambassador of Canada, because you also have with us uh, uh, a climate financing facility uh, with us there, as many of you also have. But I want to also say that the events that I've also seen uh, with regard to the droughts also tell us that we have to have our countries insured against catastrophic risk events that are coming because of climate. We have a facility at the bank, which is called um, African Disaster Risk Insurance Facility, which actually essentially pays premiums for countries to, to insure themselves against catastrophic risk events. Started off in two countries, Niger and, and Madagascar. Now we're in nine countries, but we want to go bigger than that. So I'm saying that because you are all the excellences representing your home countries, that getting access to climate finance is fundamental. The third thing I want to say on climate finance is what we are doing together with the former UN Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. Um, he and I worked together to establish what is called the Global Center for Adaptation. And the Global Center for Adaptation for Africa is based at the African Development Bank. And our goal is to raise $25 billion of climate finance to support Africa for adaptation mainly. And the last one, of course, is with the issue of just energy transition. You know, how many of you, let me just see by a show of hands, how many of you love uh, cruises, you know, cruise ships? Ah, uh, no, I'm excellent that you don't travel at all. Uh, <laughs> this is not really good. But they probably think it's a trick question. Um, but the reason why I'm saying that is that when we say just energy transition, I will say this in Glasgow, that it is like if you go on a cruise ship, you move from one part of it to another part of it, and it's stable. It doesn't matter where part of the ship you move to. That's very, very stable. That is how energy transition is for developed countries. Everything is stable. The grid is stable. Uh, the Energy systems are powered with a mix of energy that allows industries to work and everything is very, very stable. Now, when you take a look at developing countries, African countries in particular, where energy levels are still very, very low, it's like a rickety boat that you put on, a, on the sea. And so you paddle this way, you paddle that way. If you flip from this side to that, you're going you're gonna to tumble over. So that means that Africa actually needs to have stable energy systems. It needs to make sure that it has the grid system to power its economies, make sure that it can create jobs by driving industries while paying attention to renewable energy and mindful of the fact that's a decay function, that's a timeline with which we are going to have that energy transition, hence the point, just energy transition. Energy transition that allows the economies to grow, that reduces carbon footprint, but also make sure that we um, are mindful that you can't just flip up the uh, the switch and then turn it off, you know. So at the African Development Bank, we are leading on this work on just energy transition. And in fact, we are working very closely with the G7. G7, I want to thank all the G7 ambassadors that are here for the $8.5 billion that was actually put together 
for the just energy transition for South Africa. But as I was explaining to Her Excellency, the Ambassador from Canada, that the amount that's actually needed is for South Africa is actually $27 billion. And what the African Development Bank has done is to put for, together a strategic plan of how to use the $8.5 billion working with the G7 countries to help to leverage the $27 billion for South Africa to actually do the energy transition without being in debt. And I want to emphasize without being in debt. So these are the kind of discussions that we are going to be having when it comes to the meetings. To give you another headline of some of the discussions we are going to be having, it's about agriculture. Yesterday evening, um, Minister, after we finished uh, our meetings, I had a um, testimony before the US Senate, virtually. And it was to talk about the whole issue of the war, Russia's war in Ukraine, and the implications of that for Africa. And of course, that means that as we look at that for Africa, you have the issue of prices for, 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 for the conflict, you have the issue of energy, now you have the issue of climate change, and of course, so the, 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 the challenges are quite, are quite many. And one of the things that we are going to be doing to more of is getting access to climate resilient agricultural technologies to farmers at scale of millions and millions. And I'm very proud to let you know as our shareholders that we are doing incredibly well in that. And whether it is climate resilient wheat varieties, whether it is for uh, maize varieties, whether it is for rice or whether it is for soybean. In fact, before our board of directors is our plan to do emergency food production plan for Africa to respond to that particular need, which is a $1.5 billion facility. And that will allow Africa to produce 38 million metric tons of food to compensate for the 30 million that we will lose. But the point I want to make is most of that will be climate resilient crop varieties from Ethiopia to Sudan, all across to Mali and all these countries. So all I'm saying is that for climate, the issue of making sure that our farmers can adapt to climate is very, very important. At this annual meetings, just to give you three points, there are several African heads of state that we have invited to this meeting. And I want to thank your uh, uh, Honorable Minister, for, Mr. President, for having invited several heads of state. There will be a presidential dialogue session. And that presidential dialogue session is to discuss emerging issues in Africa, development issues, and how to unlock opportunities for Africa. We are also going to be discussing several issues uh, during these meetings. One of them will be the special drawing rights of the IMF and how can we make sure that we use the special drawing rights in a way that actually advances Africa's development. As you know, IMF issues $630 billion uh, in special drawing rights, but Africa only got about $33 billion. And so we do need to have a lot more to drive energy transition, to drive uh, uh, climate adaptation, to invest in infrastructure, to invest in, in, in food production, to build resilience for Africa. So there's going to be significant discussions uh, around this uh, particular issue. And ADF, the African Development Fund, will turn 50 years this year. And first, let me thank all the ambassadors that are here from all the African Development Fund countries. You've stayed true to it for the last 50 years. And during that period, the fund has provided about $45 billion of financing to low-income countries and fragile states. And we are so thrilled and excited about the African Development Fund. But of course, yesterday when I was the president, president, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, Oliver Twist, right? He said, uh, one good thing, wherever he goes, and when he finishes his talking, people say, great job, but Oliver Twist, we just want some more. The African countries need more resources to fight climate change, to deal with the issue of insecurity, to deal with the issue of debt, to deal with the issue of the conflict you see in Ukraine, to deal with massive infrastructure deficit, urbanization, lots of young people, jobs to be created, and all of these things. That needs more money. And as you know, the insecurity in many parts of Africa is a big challenge. Concessional financing is going this way. Expenditures on security is going that way. And so they are both mutually reinforcing. And so the countries need more resources. And at the African Development Bank, we've been making the case that the 16th replenishment 
of the African Development Fund, which we are in that process. It's one that is crucial for Africa, and I would very much appreciate your excellencies, your advocacy and your capitals for that. And the key for us really is we have accumulated 30, uh, uh, roughly $25 billion of equity in the African Development Fund over the last several years. And when money become tight, we need to know how to leverage this money. So your taxpayers' money, as, as donors to it, needs to be leveraged. And we believe that with the $25 billion we have as equity, we can actually leverage $33 billion of additional financing for that. So the issue is leverage. And so I want to ask for your excellencies, ambassadors of the um, ADF donor countries, to please communicate to your capitals our desire to make sure that the ADF is able to have a successful replenishment, a substantive replenishment, use its resources to go to capital markets and leverage more money. Remember, many of our countries are actually borrowing money on the capital markets at very, very high interest rate, 9%, 10%. But if African Development Fund went to the same market and borrowed that money and gave it to the countries, we can lend it up at 1.2%. So 1.2% compared to 9%. It helps also with debt sustainability. The key is Africa needs to develop with pride, use its resources, leverage, and make sure that we are doing things in a way that is actually sustainable. Let me also say that we are going to have an Africa Day, right? Uh, which is going to come, um, also be 50th anniversary um, of the passing of uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So we're gonna have a celebration. So uh, please uh, make sure that you not only come with nice suits or bow ties like myself or whatever, but come to also dance. We're gonna have some real cultural times to be able to do that. Your Excellencies, let me bring this to a close by saying that your being here is already like um, energy for us. I can feel that we're gonna have a really successful meeting. I can see that we are going to have wide participation. I can see that we are going to have excellent discussions. And I look forward to any questions that you may have as we prepare for that, as we prepare your principles for that meeting. So I can't really say anything more than I am looking forward to coming here. I'm looking forward to uh, 23rd to 27. Mark it in your calendars. Mark it again. We want to see more of you in every single session. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for this breakfast session. Thank you very much for coming. And as I said, please enjoy your food. Take whatever tablets you want to take three times after food <laughs> for agriculture is still important than medicine. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Secretary General. Um, no, 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 no speeches, no remarks. I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for making time out of your busy schedules to be here. Uh, with us uh, today. Uh, thank you very much um, for the great support uh, from the uh, Development Partners Group. Thank you also for my brother from the United Nations and all of us, the technical partners. We're looking forward to our strategic partnership with you all throughout this event. We're looking forward to your engagement with us in the issues that we'll be discussing and debating about Africa's development and economic opportunities. Uh, obviously, we're also looking forward to your support uh, for the bank itself and for all of its work. And most importantly, we're looking for you to participate and in each of the various sessions that we'll be having. So on behalf of the myself, on behalf of the Secretary General, on behalf of the Board of Directors, of the African Development Bank, and on behalf of the Board of Governors of the African Development Bank, whose, of course, the chair is here, uh, Minister uh, Ken Ofori Atta. I'd like to thank you very much for being here. I want to thank you for participating. I thank you very much for engaging with your capitals and encouraging your principals to participate actively during this meeting. So thank you very, very much. And please do not forget to take your medicines uh, you can take it now after breakfast is served. So thank you very much and God bless.